So there's a repeat here, and I'm going to start from this part here, which is where it continues. Dangling from their mouths, all turned and looked, and after a few awkward seconds, Bit ballooned his chest with bravery, rolled his shoulders back, and said, Candy for sale. A man came from behind an old wooden bar. Kid, you can't be in here. Bit knew he couldn't be in there. He knew none of them could be in there. But he had been watching this place for a while. He'd been sitting across the street, checking out who was going in and how long they stayed. The smoke that came screaming out every time the door opened. The cussing men who went on about losing money and the laughing men who bragged about winning some. This was a place for pool players, but more than that, Bit knew it was a place for hustlers. Don't I know you? Another man said. Don't matter if you know me, Bit shot back. Me and my friend selling candy. Say bye or say bye. John, John, Trista, and Francie were impressed by that line. They'd heard Bit talk like this before. This wasn't the first time they'd done this. They'd walked into a bingo hall once and heard him tell an old lady he was her troll doll. He was her troll doll, their only good luck charm she'd ever need. But this was this time was different. There was a knife in his voice, something sharp they'd never heard. And the guy did know him. Knew him from the neighborhood. That guy had fixed his mother's car once. And Bit had stood next to him, mean mugging the whole time. The guy was under the hood just in case he tried to cheat his mom. We don't want no candy, so how about... We got Mary Janes and Lifesavers, Francie joined in. Held the bags up like they were full of gold coins. Yeah, we got Mary Janes and Lifesavers, Bit said, doubling down. Mary Janes, a man, a man wearing an eye patch called from the back of the room. He set his pool cue down on the table next to him and walked toward the low cuts. What y'all know about Mary Janes? We know we got them and lifesavers too. Individually wrapped, John John added, just because it was a detail Miss CC kept adding. The man chuckled. I can't remember the last time I had a Mary Jane. He slapped the guy next to him. You? Been a long time. Used to go down south to visit my grandpappy, and he'd always have that kind of stuff in his pocket. Be all melted and still be good. And grandma used to give us strawberry candy, and when she ran out, she'd give us cherry lifesavers. And them butterscotch, another man. Oof, and don't get me started on them. Uh, them squirrel nut zippers? This came from the guy who ran the place. All this is great, gentlemen. Bit put a, put a pothole in the middle of memory lane. But like the man said, we ain't allowed in here, so how much, Eyepatch asked. Bit turned and looked at his friends, bounced his, bounced his eyebrows just slightly, just enough for them to see. Bundles of six, three of each candy, two fifty. Two fifty? That's penny candy. At least it was when I was coming up. Eyepatch couldn't believe it. My mother said gas was a dollar when she was a kid, Bit shot back. And I heard Jordan's cost like 80 bucks, John John followed against again stealing mrs cc's line guess everything costs more over time the low cuts and what seemed like one fluid motion all shrugged i'll tell you what ain't never been cheap kids i patch said and i'll tell you what's hard to find mary james one of the other men said digging in his pocket he clearly had no idea that there was a woman who sold them right around the corner you said 250 yeah, Bit sound Bit said, bouncing on his toes, anxious. You got change? Bit looked at his friends again, bounces bounced his eyebrows again. Nope. The man pulled three bucks from his pocket, handled handed it to Bit. Francie handed over the first bag. Trista spoke up. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I took them dollars off him, he replied to Trista, but pointed to a red haired man who just laughed and muttered something they couldn't hear. Eight ball, corner pocket, cha-ching. The buyer pumped his fist, and that was it. The last two bags were snatched up immediately because it turned out the thing about men in pool halls is none of them want to be outdone. For John John, Francie, and Trista, it was like looking at a room full of bigger bits in the future. Nine dollars later, the low cuts were out the door and almost out of time. Trista didn't bother checking her phone. They knew they were late because they saw the ice cream truck pulling off from its usual spot in front of the fifth house on Placer Street. It hadn't been there when they got it hadn't been there when they gone into the pool hall. It arrived at four every day and never stayed if kids weren't waiting there to buy anything. Gone by four oh two. It was four oh three. So they ran. All four of them broke out down the street, spring, sprinting, screaming for the ice cream truck to stop. Halfway down the block it finally did. The low cuts ran up to the truck, slapping their hands on the side of it. The driver yanked the window open. Almost missed me, the ice cream man said. He looks more like somebody's big brother than an ice cream man. What can I get for y'all? Four vanilla soft serves, bit ordered. Cup or cone? Cup. Sprinkles? 
Francie, John, John, and Trista looked to Bip. Hmm, sure, Bip said. On all four? Yep. Bip didn't ask anyone, and no one contested. The ice cream man handed handed cup after cup through the window, rainbow sprinkles all over them. Bit passed them down so that each of the low cuts had one, then handed the ice cream man the nine dollars. It's only eight, the ice cream man said. A dollar for you, Bit replied. Thanks for stopping. As the ice cream truck pulled off, John, John, Trista, Fancy, Francie, and Bit walked a few houses down until they got to a small house they'd all been to before, that Trista and Francie always called cute. John, John never called nothing, and Bit called home. Bit pulled his key out of his pocket, unlocked the door. Ma, he yelled, you dressed? Seconds later, later, Bit's mother, Miss Burns, came from the back and was greeted by all of them. The low cuts holding cups of fresh ice cream, not one swirl licked, not one spoonful missing. Miss Burns looked at, looked at them, her face both cloudy and sunny, her skin absent of her normal brown. Bit's mom had relapsed. The cancer had come back, but the doctors were optimistic. She could beat it again. Hey, what's going on? How was school? Bit's mother asked, kissing him on the forehead. But he shrugged off the question. How was your first day back on chemo? Oh, it was, you know, it was chemo. I'm okay. But she sounded exhausted and rubbed her stomach, a little queasy. I figured you would be, so we got you a bunch of ice cream. Bit waved his, ar waved his arm like a game show host, showing off the four cups. Vanilla, he said. The other locusts watched Bit. The hustler, Bit, who could turn 90 cents into nine bucks into ice cream, then turn it into a son, a son who was scared, a son who loved his mom. And she smiled, her shiny eyes jumping from face to face, bald head to bald head, friend to friend, with sprinkles.